Hello, my name is Sepida Abijal from University of Calgary. In this presentation, my colleague Nafid and Nabi and I are going to go through the paper, which is on privacy preserving resource sharing using permission blockchain. This is a joint work with Shaurin Rahman, Professor Rehana Safavi Naimi, and Dr. Satori Sharifian. In a resource sharing system, users share goods and services with each other. Each resource owner specifies a set of conditions of access for their resources, and the goal is to ensure that the resource requesters will get access if conditions are satisfied. Traditional sharing systems use a service provider to mediate this procedure, to let owners advertise and requesters to get access to resources. The main underlying assumption is that service provider is trusted. However, this trusted authority raises two issues. It is a single point of failure, and it has full access to users' data. Making the system to be decentralized using a blockchain was the idea of paper which was presented in WTSD19 by Venkit Swalu et al. They used the permission blockchain and attribute-based access control where the enforcement of policies were done by the blockchain maintainers. Briefly, the idea is that resource owners would share the information of their objects, such as their attributes and also the access policies, through deploying the smart contracts. And also, the resource requesters would share their attributes on blockchain using the specific smart contracts. And upon making an access request, blockchain is able to retrieve the user's attributes and object's attributes and evaluate the access policies. If the user has required attributes, blockchain issues a token to the requester who can get in touch with the owner, present the token, and get the uh, resource. However, we observe that this system is privacy invasive. The reason is that it allows users' accesses to be traced by the other registered users and also blockchain authorities. The second issue is that the owner should be always online, which limits the availability of resources. So we focus on these two issues, and our goal is to make this system private in the sense that requesters' accesses cannot be traced and also ensure resource availability. In this presentation, we will go through the outline of the new scheme, its building blocks, components, flow, and its security and privacy. Additionally, my colleague Nabi will talk about the proof of concept implementation, the abstract of smart contracts, the use case, and evaluation results. In our scheme, we use two cryptographic primitives to reach our goal. The first one is ciphertext policy attribute based encryption. We no longer do the access policy evaluation on chain and instead take advantage of CPAB scheme to cryptographically enforce access policies. In CPAB, a ciphertext is generated by specifying an access key structure. And the secret keys are associated with the user's attributes. If user's attributes satisfy the access structure, then it means that the user can decrypt the ciphertext and get access to the resource. The second primitive is ring signature, which allows users to have anonymous authentication. In ring signature, uh, signature is generated using a set of public keys, which is called a ring, and it allows the user to, to hide these keys among these rings. Ring signature provides anonymity, unlinkability, and unforgeability. Integrating these primitives with the blockchain based resource sharing scheme requires redesigning the system. I will give the outline of the new system. We consider that resource owner and requester have access to permissioned blockchain, which is managed by blockchain authorities, BA. Users should register with BA and get certificate for their public keys. BA is also responsible for uh, authenticating the users and managing their interactions with blockchain. After registration, Users should refer to two trusted authorities in the system, the Certificate Authority and CPAB Attribute Authority. CA is responsible for validating objects properties for owners and users attributes for requesters and issuing certificate for them. CPAB Attribute Authority is responsible for generating CPAB public key and users attribute secret key. One more thing that I should mention is that we assume resource owner encrypts the object he holds using a symmetric key encryption scheme and stores it in a cloud storage. CPAB is used to encrypt the object metadata, which includes the link to the object, some additional information, and its decryption key. After this stage, the system is ready for the resource owner to share the 
access information of the objects in the smart contracts. We consider five types of smart contracts in the system. Three of them are declared by BA and two of them by users. Viewdir or user directory contract is deployed by BA. Upon registering a new user, BA will send their information, including their pseudonyms, public key, and their public key certificates to blockchain. Object directory is uh, deployed by BA, by it, but it is used by owners to send the information of their objects for advertisement. It holds a table consisting of object identifier, pseudonym and public key of the owner, the description of the object, the ABI and address of the smart contracts that the user uh, is going to deploy. The object property repository contract and object access control contract are deployed by the owner. The object property repository contract holds the properties and certificate of the object. The object access control contract holds the CPAB encrypted metadata and access policies are specified for, the, for each object. We also have an adjudicator contract, which is deployed by BA and it stores the information of misbehaving parties. System can assign a verifier to check the complaints based on this uh, table. When resource owner stores the resource information in their smart contracts, the requesters can make requests to access uh, resources. But the last point that I should mention is about the authentication. Any transaction that is published to blockchain requires a signature. However, we realize that using signature is not enough and the system would be vulnerable to some attacks. For example, it could be vulnerable to a play attack. An outsider or a user who has been removed from the system may try to publish a transaction which he has captured earlier. To prevent this unauthorized access, we need a challenge response authentication. For that, we considered a random weekend service where BA publishes a random string in regular time interval. A user who wants to sign a transaction and authenticate himself to BA in time t receives the random value for time t and generates his signature using this random value. Note that we have two types of authentication in the system, anonymous authentication and non-anonymous authentication. For example, browsing the user directory and object directory contracts are done by non-anonymous authentication. Also, resource owner uses non-anonymous authentication, but for getting access to any specific resource, requester should use an anonymous authentication. I will quickly go through the steps to wrap up what I said. To advertise the resource, resource owner should register the information of the resource in object directory contract and deploy two contracts, object property repository and object access control contracts. When this is done, the information of the, object, uh, the objects are sent to everyone in the system. For accessing a resource requester, first browses object directory to find the object that he wants and get the address and the ABI of the smart contracts that are related to the object. Then anonymously refer to the object property repository and object access control contracts to get certificates, encrypted metadata, and access policies. Then he uses his CPAB secret key to decrypt the metadata and gets the link to the resource. If there is any misbehavior from the owner, requester can complain to adjudicator contract for further checks. Our system ensures that access to an object is granted if user is registered and user's specified access policies are satisfied. This happens since BA provides a trusted execution and CPAB and ring signature are unforgeable. So no user with invalid attribute, no outsider, and uh, no user who has left the system can get access to the object. And this is because of the freshness of the uh, random values as well. Our system also ensures that no one can link the requester to any resource owner and cannot link the requester to his previous request. This happens due to anonymity and unlinkability property of ring signature with the assumptions that we have made on choosing the ring members. Now, now we will continue the presentation on implementation.
We have performed a proof of concept implementation of our scheme with the following settings. For the required blockchain infrastructure, we considered a permission Ethereum blockchain that will be maintained by the blockchain authorities. We used Ganache to simulate the blockchain environment where we deployed our smart contracts and ran tests to understand the contract functionalities. For the cryptographic tools, we have used the OpenSSL library, Ring Signature by Ribust et al., and an CPAB toolkit. For the smart contracts, we wrote and compiled five smart contracts in Solidity language using the Remix IDE. Brief overview of these implemented smart contracts are shown in the next slides. Now, our goal of our proof of concept implementation is to analyze the practicality of our proposed model by measuring the cost in terms of time of the cryptographic operations in our system and the cost in terms of gas for the blockchain operations. Now we give an overview of our smart contracts. The boxes in the slide show the abstract smart contracts representing the functions each contract holds and their deployment information. The blockchain authority deploys the user directory, object directory, and adjudicator contracts. For the user directory contract, the blockchain authority calls the register user function of this contract to store the pseudonym and public key of each registered user together with a certificate which is corresponding to the user's public key. The blockchain authority can also delete an user information by calling the delete user function of this contract. For the object directory contract, the resource owner calls register resource function with the necessary information as function parameters. In addition to these, a user can also manage his resources through the update or delete resource functions. Now, the adjudicator contract allows resource requesters to report any misbehaviors, which is then verified by the verifiers. Now, the resource owner deploys two contracts, the object property repository contract and the object access control contract. The object property repository contract holds the ID, which is the object ID and properties of the shareable object. Only the resource owner who deploys this contract can update, delete, and add new resources by calling the functions of this contract. The object access control contract holds the object ID along with the access policies and the CPABB encrypted metadata of the resource. After being authenticated by the blockchain authority, the requester of an object gets the CPAB metadata and the policies from this contract that are required for decrypting the CPAB cipher, cipher text. Now, we considered an example scenario of a digital object sharing uh, using CPAB for our proof of concept implementation. In this example, suppose the user owns a movie that he wants to share. Now, each object is associated with a title and a set of properties, which includes its type, quality, and size. Now, the domain of these properties are shown in the box right side, this one. The, for example, for our object, we consider the type is movie, quality is HD, and size of the movie is 16 megabytes. We assume that the attribute universe of each user is age, preference, and club membership. And the box in the right side shows their domain. We consider two users, user A, who is the resource owner, and user B, who is the resource requester, having these attributes. The resource owner creates a metadata for the shared object, which consists of additional resource content description, symmetric key, and a download link to the resource content. For our application scenario, the constructed metadata is shown here. Finally, the resource owner also defines the access policy based on the user attributes. For this example, we consider that a user A sets the policy for accessing the movie as shown here. Now we present our results obtained from our implementation of the example scenario just we mentioned. The table here 
uh, represents the cost of cryptographic primitives used in our system, where the first column shows the names of the cryptographic operations, and the next two columns shows their corresponding time in millisecond and size in bytes. And the last column shows the accessibility, that is, who can invoke these cryptographic operations. Note that the results in the table show that the overhead for the cryptographic operation in our system are not high. For example, the most expensive operation here is the CPAB encryption, which takes only 75 milliseconds to perform. Also, for the ring signature generation, we used ring signature with ring size 10, and it takes approximately 2.8 milliseconds for the requester to generate the signature, and approximately 1.5 milliseconds for the blockchain authority to verify it. We also measured the cost of program execution in Ethereum blockchain. In Ethereum, cost of program execution is measured in terms of gas. We measured the cost of resource owner for deploying two smart contracts, which are object access control and object property repository in blockchain, and registering his resource in the object directory contract. We also report their associated management costs, which include adding, updating, and deleting an object information by calling the respective functions of these contracts. The table shows that the most expensive operation, which is the add operation, costs around 11% of Ethereum's average gas limit, which is approximately 12.4 12 million gas to date. It, it should be noted that although we measured the gas cost of the smart contract function execution in, for our model, this cost is not vital as we consider a permission blockchain setting. The goal is to estimate the complexity of operation performed on blockchain, provide a benchmark for a possible future comparison, and show the concrete cost in case the smart contracts are deployed on a public blockchain. Overall, the values in both of these tables indicate that our proposed model is feasible for developing real-world applications. Finally, uh, we. In concluding remarks, we designed and provided a proof of concept implementation of a blockchain based privacy preserving resource sharing platform that enforces user defined attribute based access policies. Our design uses cryptographic algorithms to provide anonymity for the resource owner and direct enforcement of access policies. For our future work, our work can be extended in a number of ways, such as providing anonymity for the resource provider, developing the platform into a marketplace by linking it to a cryptocurrency, providing an effective support for adjudication and handling of complaints, and finally, performing formal analysis of the system security and privacy. Thank you all. For more information, please feel free to contact us.